Hello, my name is Jeremy Elder. I am a staff product designer on GitLab's UX Foundations team, focusing on uh, the visual design of GitLab as well as Pajamas, the design system. And this is just a little primer on unboxing the UI. Uh, you might have heard this come up before, and so I want to provide a little bit of context clarification. Unboxing, not in the sense of opening or, or uh, having something new, uh, is unboxing in the sense that we have some containers, some visual elements in the user interface that contain content. Those are our boxes, and we have so many of those. Uh, and there's an opportunity to declutter the UI and clean that up. So I want to go into a little bit about this and why we do that. Uh, but first up, we love organization. Like as humans, we just love to organize things. So boxes are part of that. They're, they're part of interface design. They're part of everything uh, we do, right? Like I, I am being presented to you in a box right now. I am recording this on a box. There are boxes. So this is not an anti-box presentation. Uh, boxes are good and, and we'll, we'll show like, uh, or I'll show some good use case uh, here in a little bit and, and focus on that. Uh, but like I said, we love boxes, right? We go to big box store, we bring home a box full of smaller boxes only to assemble another box to probably hold other boxes. Lots of containers, uh, you get the idea. This is like uh, the, the Tupperware of UI design that we're dealing with. And we've tried to take round screens and change the shape, but then we just put them in a box. And, we, and likewise, we, we try to do round screens and then we just put boxes in it. So we're not getting away from boxes anytime soon. Uh, so let's learn how we can use them effectively in our UI design. So first up, we design with boxes. Uh, just a quick note, a grid is not a box, but I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Uh, the reason for that will be explained. So we design with boxes. We put content in boxes. It starts with the frame of the device you're on and, and it goes into that viewport and then into a browser or an application. And then there's different content sections in there. So we design with boxes. We'll continue to, but let's leverage them a little better. I want to start off by showing some misuse. Uh, this is application examples that uh, I think could be better. Uh, they could be improved. Uh, so misuse maybe a negative connotation here but think of it as opportunities if we want to frame it that way these are opportunities that uh, we have in front of us to update and unbox the ui uh, so three things i want to cover uh, hierarchy content layout and sectioning first up is hierarchy one of the main misuses of boxes i see today in the product is using it to establish hierarchy and what I mean by that is there's a, a nesting approach that happens. We have a, a main container. There's a content section within that that is nested to help indicate hierarchy that, oh, this is part of this object. And then another layer often. And so what happens is we end up with hierarchy conveyed through these containers. And because of that, we end up with a lot of wasted space. Not only are we you know, moving that content in, uh, but vertically we end up with a lot more scrolling uh, and, and then we limit what happens if we need to add more levels, if, if the hierarchy needs to go deeper. Uh, it, it just gets messy really, really quick. Uh, and I've seen that before. From a UX standpoint, there's no common edge for scannability. Uh, from just a purely reading scanning, what happens is you end up indenting and and that does indicate hierarchy right that's not that it doesn't indicate hierarchy but in the way it does it it's at the cost of other elements it's at the cost of, of part of another experience which is the ability to scan to find a, a common edge to establish relationships and so that's uh, another thing that happens and then lastly this is part of a, a ui polish effort and there is just so much visual noise from distracting borders these borders every every time there's a border there it's a line it's something that draws your eye away from the main content you're trying to focus on so hierarchy is the first thing that i think is is one of the, the most common misuses and by the way there's more than just three here but i think these categorize the group pretty well uh, second up content layout using boxes uh, with uh, the border on them for actual content layout. And I, and I should clarify, when I talk about boxes, 
it's not just general containers that blend in with maybe the, the page background. These are actually containers that have borders. I'm not showing actual UI here. I uh, wanna make this a little more timeless uh, as we do updates, but you get the idea. Here, we're using boxes within boxes to create columns that uh, introduces a lot of wasted space between the columns. And then again, more visual noise from distracting borders. Another example of content layout is that once something starts to use a border, it makes it uh, so there's like a precedence where everything else feels like it should be contained as well to kind of separate it, right? If it's not contained, it's floating out here. We need something to balance it, to, to create those common edges. Uh, and so it creates a kind of a false uh, precedence that, that there feels like there's a need for everything to be contained. And, and it's really uh, not necessary. And then lastly is sectioning. And what happens with sectioning, this is like an example would be in, our, in settings where there's an imbalance in hierarchy. By containing one content section, uh, yes, it does elevate it, but it's at the cost of other elements. It's at the cost of hierarchy. So all of a sudden, a content section feels more prominent than a heading. Uh, one content section feels more prominent between another. We have you know, inconsistent styles of containers. And then when you have a container, a box, or content at a very base level, it requires even more emphasis to highlight critical content. So if you're going to highlight an error state or a danger uh, area, it's going to mean that not only are you uh, updating the border and background, but potentially type, si uh, type uh, color and other attributes. So just the, the fact that it's in a container introduces so many other things that will also need to be updated to get emphasis to drown out or to have uh, that, that draw more than other content does. All right, so there's there's gotta be a better way. And, and I think there is, and I wanna highlight just a few, few, very few of the ways that we can approach this to unbox our UI. All right, so first up, just a list of things here. These are not comprehensive, but a few that I'll mention. White space, visual weight, proximity, parallelism, common regions, connections, similarity, focal point, symmetry. A lot of these are, are rooted in uh, Gestalt principles and based in just some of that, those layout practices. So I won't go too much in depth here with those, but know that that is the thinking, kind of the basis for uh, how I'm approaching this and uh, viewing a solution to a box itself. All right, so a better way. Contain complexity, unbox ubiquity. So again, contain complexity and unbox ubiquity. I'm starting here because at a high conce uh, conceptual level, thinking about what is the content? Is this a ubiquitous? Is it commonplace? Is it more basic? Is it something that doesn't require a container it, where there's other methods to establish hierarchy and relationships? Or is it very complex? Uh, so in this very simple wireframe, there's multiple controls, there's multiple rows of data, there's multiple actions. It's more complex and there's an opportunity to use a box in a better way to group this content. Uh, this is probably an oversimplified view, but if we start here, complain, uh, contain complexity, no complaining, so contain complexity and unbox ubiquity, we have the ability to start to frame up how we're going to approach the content and how we might think about using containers or other visual elements, uh, other uh, principles to have that content have meaning. A better way is just to use less boxes while leveraging other ways to create hierarchy, like I mentioned. So in this instance, instead of nesting container within container, box within box, use things like non-distracting separators, use uh, color shifts, uh, shifts in the background color, uh, visual weight and hierarchy with headings. The result of this is you, you end up with more of a common edge for scannability. You end up with no wasted space. So we're beginning to condense things, increase hierarchy, all at the, uh, the, with the benefit of having less containers. If we needed to emphasize anything else in here, we wouldn't have to then make it, uh, all these other attributes stand out from the rest of the content. Grouping, white space, and parallelism. 
So in this, white space is separating sections. We don't need an extra container to do that, to define those borders. That white space is doing that for us. Uh, so that has to do with our grouping. It has to do with parallel, parallelism uh, in the vertical column. And those columns themselves, there's closer proximity between the items within to establish the group as a column. Now, I'm not saying that each individual item here has to be unboxed itself. It, it may, there may be other treatments. If, uh, for example, if you use a, a, a tinted gray background and this just had a white background, there might be enough separation there. We don't need a border, etc. But the point here is that grouping white space and parallelism are in other ways to have uh, and leverage the same space, but have difference and have content stand out on its own while removing the clutter. Uh, something else I want to talk about here is concentric spacing. And this is the concept that the further away, the further out you move, the greater the spacing. The closer in, the tighter the spacing. And so I call that concentric spacing. If you think about dropping a, a pebble into a pond, how those ripples move out as they go away from the center, the, they start to uh, disperse and increase in distance apart. And it's the same with spacing by having internal spacing be tighter. Uh, so for example, if you take a form component, the label, the input, maybe the helper text, those are gonna use less spacing between those elements to group them. But then to differ between form element and form element, you're gonna increase that spacing. Now to be differentiated between a form element and a heading, you're increasing that spacing again. So by using concentric spacing, it's a better way to have content unboxed, yet maintain the grouping and the relationship that you're after. Uh, lastly, symmetry, common regions, and focal points. By using, again, white space uh, in here, we can establish common regions, but also using patterns like uh, focal points and symmetry, we also help establish similarities and differences and in, in this, like in this example, you can see a common region would be navigation. A common region would be these, uh, this grid of, of items that each have their own focal point. They have symmetry, they have balance, uh, but yet they have some flow and some movement. Uh, the footer might be its own region. It's spaced out from the other content. And so in this regard, we're using symmetry, we're using common regions, focal points, all to communicate that there are relationships and content meaning based on where it's placed and how it's used. This is where I'll mention grids really quick. Grids are, yes, they're box-like. Uh, they, they provide the ability to work within boxes, but I think grids, what they can actually afford us is the ability to understand where regions are. And I'm not gonna get into like 12 point grid or whatever, or 12 column. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that that matters as much as actually leveraging it so that you can establish these common regions and relationships. So that's how I use a grid. I use it very loosely to do that uh, in most cases. So some of the other benefits I want to mention really quick. Uh, these are added benefits to the visual side of things uh, and including the visual side of things. So white, sp white space, excuse me, replaces border and padding. Uh, so it's really swapping. It's not that, uh, excuse me, that we're uh, adding white space and creating more breathing room or, or anything like that. We're actually just replacing it with border and padding. So with a condensed UI, we're not losing that condensed nature. We're just replacing the attributes that uh, allow that content to be separated. Oftentimes it's less code. If we're talking about multiple containers that nest, uh, you, you might do away with some of those divs and making it easier for development, for updating, for design system like thinking to be applied. It's more responsive when we talk about spacing and condensing. All of a sudden, uh, you know, three layers nested, you know, let's say it's 16 pixels. So, you know, whatever that is, you're, you're in it, uh, you know, 48 pixels deep on each side that you're losing at a, at a smaller breakpoint, that means a lot more on a mobile layout than it might at the larger layout. So by limiting this, uh, we're more responsive. We're able to use our space better and have reflow that makes sense. There's oftentimes better semantics. When you 
restructure something and think about the relationships, maybe it should be coded as an unordered list. Maybe it should be uh, some sort of a group uh, or have other semantic benefits that isn't just boxes, just isn't meaningless divs, if you will. Uh, and because of that, you can do hierarchy. So heading level comes into this as well with the semantics. So your page structure improves for accessibility. Uh, and, and I think that adds a, a massive benefit when we start to unbox as well. Uh, improved aesthetics, mention that. Removing all of the extra visual clutter created by borders and padding, that, that's gonna help uh, with the next point scannability. Uh, just making common edges, making things uh, read correctly, and that also helps bolster hierarchy. Uh, simplified rules, so I mentioned thinking about uh, containing complexity and unboxing ubiquity, the ability to have a simple framework of how to approach this, but also when you're building things out in design, you have the ability to, uh, to not know like, okay, this is two boxes deep. If I add another box, what's gonna happen? What are the rules? You don't need that. When you flatten those boxes and those layers out, it simplifies the rules. Uh, lastly, less needed for emphasis. And I touched on that a bit, but once you add those extra visual attributes of border and background on a container, those are additional items that have to be overridden later to force another element to have more emphasis. By doing away with some of those attributes, you allow less uh, needed for emphasis. So less is definitely more here. Uh, and there are many more benefits that uh, we could go into. So here's a final just view of, of kind of a really obviously generic wireframe exploration. Same approach, right? We have hierarchy, but it's done in a different way with different attributes. We have columns, but it's done with more white space and concentric spacing. And we have common regions and symmetry, etc. So quick rundown on the unboxing effort. Thank you to all the uh, photographers uh, using Unsplash so I could borrow and use your photography for this presentation. And uh, Mr. Box says thank you as well, although he's a little, a little unhappy. Uh, but thanks for your time. If you have any questions, uh, drop them in the video, hit us up on Slack or in an issue in GitLab. Uh, also, I'm going to link to another video that I, I just recorded earlier this week uh, with a, a UI redesign session uh, with one of our, our other uh, senior product designers, Amelia Bowerly, focusing on uh, different parts of the GitLab UI in specific. And we discuss unboxing there and have some examples of how that happens in the actual GitLab UI. So I encourage you to watch that as well. I appreciate your time.